Seatbelts and harnesses secure, William. Doors closed and latched, top and bottom. Clear for takeoff, Cherokee 964, uh, to runway 24. Hey everyone, it's been a while since I did an update on flying and helicopters and things that go in the air. Uh, so here we are. Uh, first of all, for those of you that enjoy the helicopter reviews, I do have another one coming up. Bell Helicopters have very generously said that they're going to fly their new Bell 429 down to see us in Connecticut and I'm going to do a review later in the year with that. That is a very underrated aircraft, amazing twin engine, powerful, 155 knots cruise speed which is incredibly fast for a helicopter. You don't, really don't see too many 429s around and they are a remarkable aircraft so looking forward to getting to fly in that and of course and with a bit of luck we'll get to see Polly as well who did the uh, 505 video with me that everybody loved. She, she's really an awesome pilot so I hope we get to fly with her again. Cherokee 964, correction on my heading, I'm heading out to the northwest. Northwest, copy that. Uh, back to my flying, as you probably can remember I was going for my fixed wing pilot's license to add to my helicopter pilot's license a while back. Yes, <laughs> all the way back in 2019 I started on that and you might go, goodness, it's taken you a long time to get your pilot's license, Nick. And you'd be right, you know, I was pretty much there back at the beginning of 2020 and I was about to do my check ride then. But then the world fell apart and, you know, 2020 happened and part of 2021 happened and it just, you know, yeah. So I had to get back into it last year and my long-suffering instructor Roger and I went up and... I uh, did my training. What, what's interesting about my training is because I'm a helicopter pilot, I do things differently than what most students do. And so it's always a bit of an experience for Roger to, to deal with my helicopter ways. It's just l little odd things. You know, I'm very scared of the uh, of the stall warning horn, <laughs> uh, which other pilots aren't so much because, yeah, in a, in a helicopter that's extremely serious, whereas in a, in a fixed wing, it tends to be less serious, so I stay way, well away from stall warning horns. But otherwise, I'm, I'm a fairly confident pilot, and I, I'm pretty sure I'll, I'll pass my check ride, uh, which is coming up sometime in May. So yes, I'll be a licensed pilot soon. The other strange thing I've noticed is that I'm the only pilot that seems to take his stuffed toy gorillas with him. None of the other pilots do that, and people give me strange looks. It's normally William. He likes flying and has had more experience with the simulator. But sometimes I bring Albert along. He's a little more apprehensive about my flying skills. So here we are, um, William and I, out practicing for my check ride last Friday. And while I was filming this, I thought I'd take the GoPro 10 for a spin. It's just had a recent update, a 1.4, where they promised to fix a lot of the problems with the crappy GoPro 10. And I can confirm that the GoPro 10 is still the worst action cam you can buy on the market. What a pile of shit this thing is. <laughs> it lasted seven minutes before it crapped out. Not to mention that it also frozen up twice before I even took off and I had to take the battery out to unfreeze it. Oh, they're just garbage. GoPro, I hate you. So luckily the rear GoPro, which is a GoPro 8, continued to work. It was actually a little bit of a ass puckering flight for William and I because first of all there was a lot of turbulence so we were being thrown around the sky and when you're thrown around the sky it's just not a comfortable experience and you really have to concentrate and it distracts you a little bit and of course the, the aeroplane keeps saying things like this. Caution, terrain. Caution, terrain. <laughs> which worries you, even though you're not about to crash. But, but while I was doing some practice work, I started to notice that the oil temperature had really creeped up way past what it normally is in this aircraft. So I turned around and headed back towards my airport. Um, now, I wasn't worried about the engine seizing because I still had good oil pressure. But yeah, high oil temperature is not a good sign. But an interesting video by Fly MA uh, took this very type of aircraft, a Piper, uh, with the same engine in it and, and emptied the oil out completely and then ran the engine to see how quickly it would seize up. And it lasted a surprisingly long time. In fact, they got good power out of the engine for about seven minutes and the engine didn't actually completely crap out till about the 17 minute mark, I think it was. So yeah, yeah, no oil in the engine doesn't mean the engine's going to freeze immediately like you think it would. Uh, these engines are fairly robust right up to the moment <laughs> that the piston flies through the head. Um, yeah, yeah, they they're an old engine. I mean, this is this this is a brand new engine in this aircraft. And for those of you in the in the car world, it's actually quite interesting how little power you get out of these engines. It's a 5.2 liter engine, gobbling 10 gallons of gas an hour and producing only 160 horsepower. It's really some remarkable figures in these aircraft engines. 
anyway, um, I sort of brought their power back and and got the got the engine temperature back down to just below the red line, and uh, and flew it straight back to the airport. And when I landed, the mechanics had a look, and it wasn't as I said, it wasn't a particularly hot day, 18 degrees Celsius. Um, but the aircraft still had its winter baffles in, which blocks some of the air flowing through the oil cooler so that it doesn't get too cold during the winter. So that might have been the reason why the oil temperature was skyrocketing. It also seemed to have less, a lot less oil in it. Like I checked the oil before I left and there was 7 quarts, which is just right for this aircraft. And there seemed to be a lot less when I landed. But there was no indication of loss of oil, no oil under the aircraft or in the engine bay. So maybe it hadn't lost any oil. It was just the oil was so hot it was hard to read on the dipstick. Anyway, they put more oil in it and they were going to test it. And I'll be flying this aircraft later in the week. So we'll see if it stays in the air. So that's the latest. I'll be doing my fixed wing check ride in May and finally be licensed for, for flying both helicopters and fixed wing aircraft. The skies will no longer be safe. And I'm looking around for other helicopters to review, but I'll certainly be doing the 429 very shortly from Bell as well, which will be exciting. So that's that's flying update. Thanks for watching as always, everyone. We'll see you in the next one. Bye then.